Houston, we have ignition. Hello folks, and welcome back to another edition of BC Renovation Magazine. So uh, in this video I'm going to show you uh, how we installed a new HVAC system in our 40 year old mobile home to update it and get it all modern. And uh, if you'd like to see what we did, stick around. All right, folks, so this uh, home is a, it's a 1984 and uh, this home had the original uh, furnace in it from 1984. So, you know, it almost almost 40 years old and uh, it was it was an intertherm 80% uh, efficient. Uh, you know, 80% efficient in 1984 is a lot different than 80% efficient now. Um, and what we've done is we, we took and replaced that system uh, with a brand new complete system. So we put in a new furnace and a, a new central uh, air conditioning uh, system as well. And uh, we also uh, uh, did the first first time we did something like this in, a, in one of these projects, these mobile home projects, we installed a 95% uh, efficient condensing furnace. So very, very high efficiency furnace. And we made that up with a 13 sear uh, air conditioner unit. So now we're up in Canada, and uh, I know a lot of we have a lot of viewers from the states. And uh, a 13 sear is not approved in the southern states. Like if you're down in California, Texas, uh, you I think you have to go to a 15 or a 16 sear. But up here where we are, we're up in the Great White North here, so uh, we can get away with the 13 sear. Um, it meets our code and and all of that. So uh, HVAC system is uh, is not something that's really uh, I wouldn't recommend a, a do it yourself or uh, you know it's not a do it yourself project. Um, you know I do a lot of things, but I I don't tackle HVAC. So uh, this uh, video is just going to kind of show you how we handle it in this home. Mobile homes, you know the uh, the HVAC systems can be a little bit tricky. Um, you know you don't have a lot of space a lot of times and. Uh, there's, you know, there's things that you have to deal with. Um, so we're going to show you what we did in this one. And uh, uh, hopefully you'll, uh, you'll learn something here. And if you're deciding to upgrade your system, then, uh, you know, this can kind of be a guide. All right. So uh, the system that we went with is, uh, is a York, as the brand name is York. Um, you know, and, and I've done all kinds of systems in these homes. I've done uh, Carrier and... Uh, uh, you know other 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 systems, but this one we got a York. So this is a 95% uh, efficient furnace, and it is uh, a condensing furnace, which means that we have uh, these pipes that go up up here, and so we have one is the exhaust. I believe this is the exhaust. No, yeah, this is the exhaust, and so it goes up into the attic space there. And on this side we have a return. So air exhaust. Uh, stuff goes out here uh, out onto the roof and I'll take you up on the roof and show you that um, and this one draws air in into the combustion chamber so it's a complete completely closed system um, so this is the furnace itself up here on the top was the blower I'll, I'll open it up and show it to you here we have the burner and then underneath here we have the uh, a coil for the air conditioner so inside of that is the air conditioner a coil uh, we got a lot going on here. So we have a, a line set that goes out to the condenser unit outside. So there's two lines there. We have a, a liquid line and a gas line. Um, and then we have the gas for the furnace that comes in here. And uh, we have a shut off here as well to shut it off, to shut it down. And we have a wire here that goes out to the controls on the condenser. So that goes into the circuit board. I'll show you that. Um, we have Electrical, so this is the electrical that's coming into the furnace. Uh, this is the thermostat wire that comes from the thermostat up on the wall here. And we went with a Honeywell uh, home. Uh, this is a programmable unit. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's backlit. It's a really nice little thermostat. And then we have, uh, because this is a condensing furnace, we have to deal with... Uh, uh, water so it, it, in the in the combustion process it makes water and so underneath here um, this this tube here this white tube 
that comes along here is the condensate water. So when the furnace is running, we get water coming down this tube and then it drains down this tube here and it goes down and I'll show you how we got get, how we get rid of the water. So this one in the, when you're heating you get water coming out of here and then when you're cooling then we have this one uh, which takes water out of the coil. So when your uh, air conditioner is running it actually dehumidifies your air and so again you get water coming uh, here. So it all uh, joins together here goes down and I'll show you how we uh, dealt with that down in the crawl space. Uh, we tied it into the main sewer line and uh, we had to install a trap there as well. Because we uh, installed it in the uh, main main uh, sewer line, we had to do something to keep the gas sewer gases from coming back up into the room. Uh, you can see how it's uh, open on the top here and so this is still allowed to, to uh, draw water. Okay. Uh, and it's also open inside where the, the, the tray is for the underneath the uh, underneath the uh, the coil. All right, so we basically have three components here. We have the air conditioning, we have the burner, and we have the fan. Now, in a uh, mobile home, we don't have uh, a return air ducts. It just draws into the furnace. So this is a downflow furnace, which means the air goes into the furnace this way and then it goes down and then it, it goes into the main ducts which go both ways and then it goes out into the branches uh, okay we have for example we have a, a branch here so this one would come off of the main duct that's running underneath the furnace and that runs all the way end to end and then you get these little ducts coming out here so we didn't replace any of the main ducts or anything underneath this as far as the ducts we just uh Put the unit on top of the old plenum and uh, that's how we did it so uh, there's a lot of technicalities involved with that there's a lot of people that say it isn't right i don't know it's kind of the way we do it and it works well and we're allowed to do it so uh by a you know from our inspectors so uh, that's the way we do it now so this is intake air up here and this is the way my hvac guy uh handled it and this is my hvac guy right there Richard, he did an awesome job, a great guy. If you're in the uh, Kelowna area, highly recommend him. He's a, he's a really good guy. So what, what they did was they built a, uh, what he did was he built a uh, little filter rack here. And so you can pull the uh, the furnace out this, the, sorry, the filter out this way to change it. So it's got a, you know, a real proper uh, filter. And so here you can see uh, underneath the filter is the fan. All right, and then he had to put this box, and again, this is just the way our inspectors like to have this done in our area. In your area, you might have to have it done differently. But uh, this, this thing, this little thing just clips in here. And now what's going to happen here is uh, we're going to be putting a door on here. So this is going to get uh, covered. You won't see it. The door is going to have to have some kind of louvers or vents or something to allow the air to draw through it so that, you know, this thing will suck air into the furnace. Now you can see how, uh, you know, I got everything painted in here. I got it all cleaned up. I, I taped it out and I painted it before we put the furnace in. You can see that, you know, it's a pretty tight fit in there. And this is one of the problems I, that I've had in, you know, previous projects. This is the first one that I've done a 95% uh, efficient uh, furnace. Um, our our uh, jurisdiction has required for quite a long time that any new furnaces, like any reinstalls, have to be um, high efficient. But the exception to that has been uh, mobile homes. And so in my projects up to now, I've been doing the 80% or I do a package unit, which is, which is a different system altogether. Still only 80% efficient. So this one, um, you know, I rebuilt this whole area here. And uh, I'll put a link in the description to the video that shows the, uh, you know, the work that I did to rebuild this. And when I did it, I, I made this deeper so that it would fit this furnace. So I ended up with an alcove here that's 24 inches wide and 32 inches deep. And even with that, I mean, you can see it's going to be pretty tight to get a door on there, but uh, should be able to do it. All right, so uh, I'm going to open it up. I'm just going to show you the in, in, insides of this thing. All right, so this is what it looks like inside. So this is the top section here of the of the unit of the of this whole thing, and so this is the fan compartment. So so back in here you can see the the fan, 
And then here you can see the control board. So this is what controls, this is the brain of the whole thing. And uh, in here we have, this is the combustion compartment. So uh, here we have the burners. Uh, so in the, uh, the opening clip there, you saw these things ignite. Um, and then this is a little fan here that creates a draft. Um, so you can see this is exhaust pipe is connected into this thing. So uh, it goes through a series uh, a series of when it starts up. And so what you saw in the in the uh, the opening video there was this little thing uh, started up. What that does is it creates air, starts moving it out the chimney before the burner lights. And then that orange glow that you saw was uh, the igniters uh, lighting up, heating up, and then and then the gas valve puts gas into that and then it starts and then once that happens then the fans the fan will turn on so that's kind of the sequence of it I'm not going to open the coil but inside of the of there we've got a, a coil an a-shaped coil for the air conditioning and this panel is removable so that you can get in there and clean um, you know clean the coil and service the coil okay so now I'll take you outside and show you the outside component of this all right, this is, so this is the outside component. So this is what's called a condenser. And uh, this is uh, branded Evcon, but Evcon and York are all part of the same family, um, which is, uh, this stuff's all made by Johnson's Controls. It's made uh, somewhere in the States. I think maybe Wichita, Kansas, I'm not sure. Uh, it's all American made. But uh, this is the unit that uh, exchanges the, uh, the uh, heat for the cold. Uh, this is where it happens. And... Uh, that line set that I showed you inside, this stuff's kind of dirty, We've had a lot of bad weather here, but uh, there you see your uh, your two lines. So you have your gas line and your liquid line. And then we have, uh, inside of this one, we have the control wire that comes in that controls it, that mates it to the furnace. And then this is our power. And so we've got a uh, 240 uh, two pole breaker inside. And then we have to install, uh, where we are, we have to install a disconnect. Again, your code may be different. But uh, this is our disconnect, so you just, uh, if, they, if they come to service the air conditioner, they have to be able to turn the power off here, so it's safe for them. And so that's, that's what this little box is. And uh, that goes back to a, uh, to a breaker on the panel. And that's what powers this. All right, so in there we have a big fan on the top that draws the air through, draws the air through these coils. And uh, yeah, that's kind of how it works. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to take you up on the roof and show you the uh, the vent or the chimney, whatever you want to call it, up on the roof and uh, how we, you know, how it looks on the other end of all of this. So you can see we have these two pipes going up into the attic, and in in the attic the two pipes join into uh, this thing he calls a bazooka, and we end up so we end up with just one pipe going up through the roof. So the, I'm going to go up on the roof now, I'll show you, but this is what it looks like below, and I'm going to show you what it looks like on top. I can't show you in the attic, we've got it all uh, closed up already. We've had this uh, in here for a while, and uh, I mean, it's cold, and it's been running, and uh, it, uh, I really like it. It's a nice system. All right, so this is the, uh, this is the uh, chimney, or whatever you want to call it, up on the top. I believe the actual proper term for it is a uh, concentric vent and you can see it's got a little bit of a hood on the top and I don't know if you can pick it up on the uh, video or not but you can see um, there's a, a, the uh, steam coming out of the top there which is the uh, the furnace is running right now so it's uh, blowing the uh, spent exhaust gases out but uh, you know we just have that one neat little pipe which is uh, which is kind of what I like. Um, there's different ways to handle that, uh, and I'll show you. I'll show you another way. Um, you know, it, uh, if you're doing a refit, sometimes they'll just bring that the vent up through the existing chimney from the old furnace. Uh, another time, they will actually uh, run out of the wall. Now this is just it from another angle, so you can see it over there, and I think you can see the uh, exhaust steam coming out there. So another way that you can do it if you're doing a refit, sorry, refit, um, is to, uh, you can do it like that over there. 
you can see right uh, where is it right, right in there the uh, what they did over there was they uh, you put the exhaust and then they they ran the intake separate and uh, just came up through the old existing old chimney so that's a diff that's another way that you can do this um, they also do them coming out of the wall uh, but I like that it's up on the roof and uh, you know it's out of sight out of mind so now I'll take you down uh, take you down in the crawl space and show you how we handle all that green all right so down here in the crawl space right above there's the furnace we're sitting the furnace is right above here and so uh, what we've got here is you can see this uh, plastic stuff this is insulation inside of that uh, he came through the floor with his three-quarter inch PVC and put a trap in there and then uh, from from the on the on this side of the trap we uh, transitioned it to an uh, inch and a half and uh, what we did was uh, right here you can see where we installed a uh, uh, this this uh, fitting in here and then uh, our insulation or sorry our, our uh, uh, inch and a half pipe then goes up and it's in inside of this insulation here and uh, so you got inch and a half all the way through it there up to that point there and and then we transition to the three quarter so now the reason that we went with the uh, uh, we, we transitioned to the inch and a half was to give the pipe more more volume so there's quite a bit of the water actually that comes out of that when the furnace is running this space down here is unheated right so you know it's there's no there's no heat in here it is pretty protected and now we're in a climate you know where it doesn't get really really cold but it does get cold you know and uh so it it doesn't run as much as per se as, as it trickles and so with that slow moving water trickle coming down you know into this main pipe so from here and that goes down the main pipe then then down into the place where it goes to the sewer um we had a concern that you know if it was a small pipe trickling through here and it got cold that it could possibly freeze up you know in between the heating cycle and uh, you know and then create create a blockage if that happens then you end up with a little flood up on top because then all that water has no place to go but by transitioning it to a, an inch and a half and then we put this uh, insulation around it uh you know then down here we're getting into a three inch pipe and you know once you're down in here you know then you've got water running through here often you know this goes back to the bathroom back there kitchen ties into this you know so you've got uh, lots of water running through here to keep this clear and uh, so it's very unlikely that we're going to get anything you know freezing in here but uh, for this little section here yeah we it's quite possible so you can see see what we've done there and so everything here is you know is heated up above and uh, you know insulated in below here and it's you know transition so it's a bigger pipe so it, it's uh, got room to you know to build up a little bit of ice uh, in our climate you know we'll get cold doesn't last it'll last for a few days you know and then it warms up again and starts melting so uh, if you are in a climate where uh, you have like really cold minus 30 40 50 you know you might have to do this differently um there is you, there is pumps and things that you can use uh, uh we we tried to keep it simple and uh this is how we did it and it's working well it's been cold here no no sign of anything freezing up works works well and while i'm here i'll show you the other stuff underneath in the crawl space here so uh, <coughs> this is the main gas line coming in over here and this is the gas line that went to the old furnace and so what he did now to connect to the new furnace is he transitioned from the solid pipe to this uh, soft copper uh, here we're allowed to do that uh, your jurisdiction may not allow that but we we can and uh, then again this is the what's called the line set this is coming from the a coil up in the furnace so we've got our liquid line and our gas line and then we also have this control wire as well and that goes down and it goes out through the skirting over there and out to the con uh, condenser sitting on the other side so now uh, i still have to uh, fill around those little holes there um, i'll be putting some duct seal in there to keep uh varmints from coming through that little hole there but uh you know this is just pretty fresh uh not quite done uh 
with it yet with the little details but that is going to get uh, right there that's going to get uh, filled up so that nothing can get in here all right folks so that's how we handled the uh, HVAC system in this home this time and uh, yeah I'm very pleased with the system um, it seems to be working really well it's been in for a month or so now and you know, we've had some cold cold weather and it's uh, it's uh, yeah working really really good I haven't seen any gas bills yet um, but we'll you know we'll see as the season progresses here what those are gonna look like uh, frequently asked the question how much did it cost so uh, that complete system uh, with the uh, furnace 95% Efficient furnace York brand and the uh, 13 sear air conditioning uh, central air conditioning unit there uh, was $7,200 Canadian uh, Supplied and installed the whole thing that was permits and everything the only thing that that didn't include is the tax and So uh, here we have 5% uh, on top of that for tax um that, so that equals to uh, about five thousand dollars U.S. and you know that's the heating that's heating this home which is a uh, uh, 66 by uh, 14 so 924 square feet. So I'm uh, pretty happy with that. I uh, I think that was a good good price and uh, yeah, it's a big component. You know, one of the bigger uh, bigger ticket items when you when you do uh, a project like this, but. Uh, uh, you know your payback on it is is really really high um, We also where we are we're in British Columbia Canada So uh, if this was my primary residence and I was going to live here. I, I actually qualify for a, uh, a grant from the uh, uh, Provider which uh, is Fortis gas here. So uh, right now they're offering a rebate which is a thousand dollars so that takes a thousand dollars off the price of the uh, system and the way it works is uh, you get the system installed and then you uh, make an application for the rebate and if you qualify which this system is a qualifying system the only reason I don't get it is because I uh, I'm not gonna live here that's not my primary residence um, I actually did uh, three years I did a system in my primary residence and so I got the rebate on that one but what they do is they credit your uh, utility account with $1,000. So you basically end up getting $1,000 worth of uh, gas uh, as part of that rebate for, for free. So yeah, that's a pretty nice little perk. So if you're in British Columbia, uh, Canada, and you're doing one of these systems, that's worth looking at. All right, folks, so that wraps it up for this one. Um, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.